Our next speaker is Alice Dien from Biological Systems Engineering. Okay. Who else was shocked by the price of their energy bill in January? <laughs> At first, I thought I have let the oven on for a week or something. But then I found out that natural gas prices have almost doubled since last year. Great. First it was the gasoline, now it's the natural gas. Do you know what's next? Food. I can tell you, if energy prices go up, you will soon see price increases in most of the food you love. My name is Alice Dien, and I study how we use energy to make food. Specifically, I specialize in one of the most energy intensive processes, drying. If you had a cup of coffee this morning, or if you've ever had almonds, or walnuts, or even just rice, you can thank drying. Without it, all these products would get spoiled within one week. In fact, 60% of the calories lost globally today happen because of things that were incorrectly dried. But how does this all relate back to energy, right? I asked a rice processor in Sacramento how much she spent to dry the rice in her facility last year. That means, bringing it down from 20 to 13% moisture. Her answer, nearly $500,000. Now imagine what that's gonna look like when it doubles. Almost one quarter of the entire US food industry's energy consumption comes from drying. And not only does drying use a lot of energy, but it also releases greenhouse gases from burning gas to produce heat. Heating or dryers, is also heating our planet. So what can we do about it? Who's ever been tempted to eat one of these delicious <laughs> looking things? <laughs> That's a silica gel package, one of many examples of a desiccant material. Desiccants can remove moisture from their surroundings and with a fan, create a flux of dry air. In my research, I'm designing a new drying system that uses desiccants instead of heat. With desiccant drying, we can switch from burning natural gas to electricity and make drying cleaner and cheaper. Now, I can plug my drying system into solar panels and operate completely off-grid. Imagine what that would mean for farmers that don't have access to the electric grid yet, but that need to dry their staple crops. Pretty important, right? Desiccant drying would be a game-changing solution for three of the biggest challenges humanity is facing, food safety, food insecurity, and climate change. Thank you. How, how do you come up with that type of interest in research? I mean, I'm trying to figure out your thought yes. process. Yes, how so, do you come up with that? I've been interested in agriculture for a long time now, and I've seen that a lot of the research that's going on targets like production, like increasing production, producing more, um, especially knowing that the world population is gonna grow over the next few years. But I was reading and I, I found out that one third of the food we produce right now is lost between the moment you harvest it and the moment you give it to the consumers. So I was like, why? Why is no one doing anything about Well, there's people doing mm. something about it, but I was like, that's what I want to do, right? <laughs> that's what I want to work on. So as I said, 60% of the calories that we're losing today happen just because of drying, which seems to be a s simple process on paper, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's how I decided I wanted to work on this and hopefully like help with this issue, especially for people that, you know, rice, corn, all these crops yeah, need yeah. to be dried. So it's pretty important. Okay. That makes sense. We, we talked a little bit before about mm -hmm. uh, the importance of science communication. I'd like to hear your take on the importance of science communication, specifically in, in agriculture. Mm -hmm. Well, I, um, I'm actually co-writing a paper with Lucia right now mm -hmm. on, <laughs> sorry, Lucia, mm -hmm. on um, uh, like, we asked far walnut farmers in California if energy conservation strategies were helping them with the drying process, and we found out that no, and it's mostly because they're not correctly aware of how they're supposed to use it. 
So that's, that's how I started to think, like, how is it possible I'm doing this system? Like, it's supposed to help farmers. It's not helping them. And then I realized that I think science, the importance of science communication is kind of both ways. Um, I'm very interested in community-based research and public scholarships, so kind of like not only telling farmers like this is how it can be done to work, but also farmers telling me like this is what I need um, and being able to conduct research a little bit in that state of mind. And you've been able to do that here? This Yes, yes, definitely. Excellent. UC Davis is like an awesome place to do that. <laughs> do you... Um, Maybe that's, a, I don't know, I'll ask a question and then we'll see. Um, are there other applications be beyond the food industry? I mean, for this type of process, drying is needed in many technological yes. areas. Yes, like, uh, well, it's still related to agriculture, but like bioethanol and biofuels that come from corn, all that corn needs to be dried. Yeah. Um, wood needs to be dry. There's, drying is like one of the largest like processes in industry it, mm -hmm. it just takes so much energy and it's pretty much everywhere yeah. so yes okay <laughs> can you tell us what you do um, when you're we talked about you know work-life balance so what is your strategy for work-life balance well I can say I don't cook <laughs> and all my <laughs> friends know that <laughs> yeah um, but I'm a musician mm -hmm. I play okay. saxophone um, I play at the UC Davis jazz band mm -hmm. That's been a lot of fun. Um, I'm passionate about basketball too. Mm -hmm. I used to be a referee, and now I just watch it on TV or I go support the Kings. So. Okay, all right. Well, we have a competition here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.